let me record it from now on. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to import this data into, oh, sorry, uh, more to go. So the cool thing about SQL Lite is once you open up your user folder, you can put SQL Lite in it, right? You put these uh, three pro these three program files in there. Do you have the three program files in there? Yeah. You have SQLite3.def. Yep. Got DLL and EXE. Yep. Okay, so if you if you have that in there, you can open up SQLite right here, and you don't need a path. So let's do that. Let's do command CMD. Open up the command prompt. And I don't have to change the path if I do it this way, right? My files are in this path. Right, my files are in this path. SQL Lite 3 is in that path. So I can just type SQL Lite 3, and then I can name I can I can create a new database or I can just use one that I've already had. Maybe I'll just do MBA 675 DB, right? And this starts the program and this names the database, right? Or it 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 says open this database, right? If it's already, or if it already exists. Now what you can do is you can do dot tables, dot tables, and you can see all the files that you have in there, right? Now I'm gonna drop the, I'm gonna drop the minimum wage file. Actually what I wanna, yeah, I guess it's all right. Let me do this, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a different database. Okay, I just gotta start over, I guess. I thought it was quit. I'm gonna just create a new database. I wanna clean, I wanna create a clean one. So I'm gonna do SQL Lite three, and then I'm gonna do it MBA DB. How about that? I'm gonna create a new database. And there's nothing going to be in it, right? Dot tables. There's nothing in it, right? So I'm creating a new database. And if you look here, you might see the new database. There it is right there. there there's a new database and it's got nothing in it. Zero kilobytes, right? Nothing in it. Okay, so in order to import a CSV file improperly, Right. What does CSV stand for? And you know, it's comma separated. Stands. Yep, comma separated. So we need a dot separator. We need a dot separator, and then single quotation, comma, close single quotation. And this tells SQL Lite that it's a comma separated value file. Okay. And then we're going to type import. We're gonna type import and we're gonna import our, um, what was it? Minimum wage dot CSV. And we're, call it, we're gonna call it minimum wage, min wage. If it starts with a period, if the line starts with a period, you don't end it with a semicolon. Okay, dot import. And the other one is states, right? States.csv. We're going to call that states. Okay. Any questions on that? And then we can see and we can see if we have these table uh, tables, right? We have minimum wage and states in our database. And notice that uh, over here, our MBA DB database is no longer empty. It's got 232 kilobytes in it. See that? Cool, huh? All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a table. And this is one of my code fixes that I posted today. This is the code fix I put in today. I wanted to, um,
Oh, uh, crap. Is this the right one? So I didn't find the code fix. I saw the note about the code fix, but I didn't see it in the actual file. I think I need to do an and right here, right? I think I messed this one up too. This should, I think I had this in the uh, announcement. Crap. I think I just opened up the wrong one. In the announcement. After minimum dot year equal states dot year, you want to put a min dot states fips equal states dot state fips. Let me see if it's the right one. Whoa, what happened? That's what it did? Okay. Crap. Yeah, I don't, I don't have it right there. I'll have, to, I'll have to update that. So right here, we had, to, we had to include and dot state FIPS because remember we have years and we have state FIPS, right? So if anybody has this code open in, S, in SQL Lite 3, we need to do this first, okay? So if you've already created your state panel and you didn't include this step, we have to, we have to fix it, right? Let's copy this. Okay, and that should run, and it worked. See that, it worked. You don't wanna redo it, because I think you might have to delete state panel. You might have to delete state panel, or drop state panel. Can you put that in the chat? Yeah, I can put this in the chat. So I'll put a couple things in the chat real quick. Hang on a second. Okay, in the chat, I'm gonna first put drop, table, state, panel. That's the first thing you want to do. You want to, if you, if you did the merge, if you did the join um, with just the year, you might have a mistake in your panel. So you want to do that first. And then you want to do this code. Everybody got that? So first do drop table, state panel, and then recreate state panel, okay? Because uh, you have to have this, you have to, you have to use the two keys, right? You have to use these two keys, the year and the state fibs, right? Now, if we drop the state panel, but we've created all of the other tables, is that going to cause other issues, or will everything? No, because when, when you when you rerun the, all the other queries, it'll it'll be fine. But there okay. wasn't there wasn't anything else that we were going to do to this. Uh, one here. There wasn't anything else we were going to do to it. We were okay. going to save it. We we're going to save it and then play around with it in SQL Trek. Okay. So, so yeah, the there's nothing else we we're going to do to it. The one today. We don't need to drop it. Yeah, we're, we're not going to do anything else to this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to save it. Right? Next thing we're going to do is save it. So, uh, is this is this fine? Uh, how, if I have SQL Studio instead of SQL Trek? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll work fine. Okay, yeah, I think I think Sarah's got SQL Studio for Windows, right? SQL Studio for Windows is kind of cool. You download a zip folder, you unzip the folder, and you can put that folder on your desktop, and you can click on SQL Studio, and it just starts up without installing it onto Windows. So it it floats above Windows, if you will. Okay, did everybody do that? Drop table state panel and then recreate state panel, right? And this does the... Um, and just to make sure I'm understanding it, you said you want it on our, on our state panel database that we created, you want to do this with, right? I don't know. <laughs> can, anybody, can anybody interpret that? That's like Hotel Transylvania. I... Uh, <laughs> So we created a state panel database before this class. Yeah, if you created it before class, you need to drop it and then recreate it. If you haven't created it yet, okay. if you're you're fine, you don't have to you don't have to do this. If you do this first, 
it'll probably give you an error because there's, there's no state panel, right, in your database. Yeah. Okay. So then you could just do that. So. Okay. Then all we have to do is save it, right? Then all we have to do is save it. Oh, we can uh, we can do the tables thing again. And we got state panel, min wage, and states. And here's something. Oh man, where'd it go? I had I think I opened up the wrong thing. Oh, this is the one I was supposed to have. <laughs> but this one doesn't have it either. I had one last piece of code that I wanted to run. Sarah, do you have that one thing with the PWBRB or whatever it was? Do you have that? Where we got the 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 um, where we got the uh, names of the columns? Remember that line of code we ran? Yeah, I'm trying to trying to think of it. It was like P something. Uh, Prama, pra Praga, Prag, Pragma, or Pragna. P R G A N A or something. Yeah, it it looked like program, but it, yeah, it was totally different. Let me see if I kept it. I thought I had that saved. Yeah, you you did. You uh you. You had it off the website. I got so many things open right now. I don't even know what's going on. Pragma. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pragma. Here it is. <laughs> I had it. I thought I had it right here, but I don't know. It was typed in mine. <laughs> I had just too many things open. You guys can't see all the stuff I got open. <laughs> Even I got to close out the chat. There it is. I put it in the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. Okay, so if you type P-R-A-G-M-A, table underscore info, and then state panel. That'll give you the name of the columns. See that? Column zero is year. So SQL does the same thing. The first column is zero. Then state FIPS, state UR, real gross domestic state product, right? I'll put that in the chat too. So if you run that, it'll give you the, the column names, right? The column names. And it's kind of helpful when you're combining data sets together where you might not have used the same name in different tables, right? The, the key is to try to do that, right? Okay, so the last thing we have to do is we just have to save this panel data set as a, as a DB. We're gonna save this table as a DB. And I, and I named it capital S state, capital P panel, right? So I'm gonna do dot save state panel DB. And that's good, right? Okay, I gotta, I gotta close some of this stuff out, holy moly. Let me uh, save, make sure I got this here. <laughs> I'll put it right here. Oh. To see the um, column names of state panel. How about that? I'll re-upload that. <laughs> Let me see if I have any other versions of it open. Holy crap, where is that at? There it is. Okay, it's got that code fix right here. 
and then it's got the code fix here and then it's got that okay so file save as Six seventy-five. Okay, we're done with that code. Let me um, upload it real quick before I forget. I want to forget. Where's the class website at? Huh. I thought I had that open. I probably have it open. I just send a different canvas window or files. The files are in the computer. Upload. Good old Zoolander. <laughs> I don't know if that was where I put it. Let me try uploaded media. And then unfiled. I'm just trying to make sure that it's going to be the file that you open up. Okay, good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to open up SQLite. And if you have a different version of SQL, it should work fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to reopen it up. State. I'm going to open up, uh, click on that. And there is my database that's just been modified at 725 tonight. <laughs> I don't need to have those queries saved. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click on it. And this will give me the three tables, right? So I could have, I could have, uh, I, I could have done the, uh, this right here. I could have done it here, right? I could have done the state panel code here, right? And that would have created this panel from these two, right? You see that? So if I if I delete this, drop table if it exists, state panel, yes. And then I refresh. Now I only got the two tables there, right? So if I come back here and I run it, it'll create it. And I hit a refresh, boom, it's already done, isn't it? Right? And I can view it. Oh, actually, I can I can uh, run this code here from the chat. The pragma. I can run the pragma, and it'll give me the column names, right? The first column name was year. It's a little easier to see it in SQLite, right? But this gave it. This was the exact same stuff that um, I got here, right? See that? Zero year text, right? State FIPS text, two state text, three UR text, right? So it gives you the same thing, but it's easier on your eye in SQL Lite, right? Okay, our first query you're gonna run, is gonna be a cool query. I was, I was having a lot of fun doing this earlier today. <laughs> we'll do a simple one. Let me uh, do a simple one here. I'll uh, trim this up a little bit and then we'll just add to it. <laughs> now, what kind of state generally has a minimum wage law. What kind of state's gonna have a minimum wage law? Utah doesn't have one, but Colorado does. Democrat state. Probably a Democrat state, right? But not necessarily, right? 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna type this code up here. You guys can go ahead and type it too. Just type select, and then you want to hit enter, and then put a bunch of spaces. And what was this HSMWG variable again? Does anybody remember what that was? Here, let me uh, get a new query. Select star from state panel. Okay, so if you go out here to the final column, whoops, there's a bunch of zeros here, right? And then there's all of a sudden a one. The one indicates that this minimum wage in this particular state was higher than the federal. You all see that? When the state minimum wage is the same as the federal or less than the federal, then this would be zero. If it's one, then the state minimum wage was bigger than the federal, right? So maybe it's an indicator that the state has become maybe a little more liberal than it has in the past, right? So if, if all of a sudden in a given state, this variable is one, perhaps that state's trending toward liberal now, right? Okay. So that's what that is, right? So let's go back to the query. Okay, then we're gonna round it, right? We're gonna round it. We're gonna take the average of unemployment rate and we're gonna round it to two decimal places and we're gonna name it average UR, average UR. We're gonna get it from the state panel data set. We're gonna get it from the state panel data set and we're going to group by that dummy variable, the zero and ones. And we'll go ahead and run that. What? Oh. Okay, that's weird. Okay, that's weird. I didn't have this problem earlier today. I just did this. All right, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, that's weird. As average you are. Okay, that's weird. It works now. All right. What are, what are those two numbers saying there? This, this is where you start putting it on your thinking cap, right? What's the average unemployment rate for states who have a state minimum wage greater than the federal? Is it higher than states without a state minimum wage that's greater than the federal? Why would that be the case? That's interesting, right? So the unemployment rate is higher in states where the state federal the state minimum wage is greater than the federal. So what that means is if you increase the minimum wage, you might increase the unemployment rate. Right? Interesting, huh? Do y'all find that interesting? So um, my my numbers are different than yours, and I don't know why. Did you delete it and re? Yeah. So I didn't delete it. I just started over and saved it in a different spot. Okay. Yeah, I have 5.6 and 5.26. Yeah, 5.49 and 5.3. I have a, this 0.6 and 0.26. And I have an extra line with H, S, M, W, K. Huh. Okay, that's weird. How about this? How about we delete the state panel? Everybody delete their state panel, rerun this code here. Just drop that. Run, this is how you drop it, right? You could actually just drop it like this. We know it exists, right? So in query six, just drop table state panel. And then refresh. And then 
rerun this code that's in the chat. Let's make sure that we uh, are joining on year and state FIPS, right? So just rerun that from the chat. Now, if our underlying min wage table and state tables are slightly different too, yeah, even if we do, yeah, that that could cause a problem, also, right? Yeah, are, are you only seeing three tables, or do you see a bunch of different tables? I just see three. Okay, all right. How's everybody else looking? Let's do a, a another basic chat or query. Let's just do average UR, average LFPR, average BS from uh, state panel. What do you guys get when you run that? Just diagnostics now. Did everybody get their state panel back? No, I'm still trying to get that back. Oh, you're still trying to get it back? This is in the chat, right? I put this in the chat, in the Zoom chat. If you, if you want to check to see if you have, you can just do a refresh here too, right? And then it'll pop up. It, is, it takes like a second for it to generate that data or do that merge. Did everybody get it back? Everybody got it back? Sarah, you got it back? Okay. Uh, Priya, did you get it back? Yes, yes. Uh, RG got it back? Or RG, G. okay. Uh, Sarah, uh, Tristan, you got it back? Tristan? Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Then when you did this query here, select, av I mean, we could format it so it looks nicer. So when you do this, you want to, I just want to compare these numbers, see if they're the same. Close enough. I mean, rounding out 10 decimal places are a little different. Okay. Are they all pretty close? Um, how, uh, can you share this uh, query in chat box? This query right here? Yeah. Thank you. Man, this yeah, big monitor. When, this big, this big when monitor. I run, when I run this, I got the same as you this time okay. around. Okay, cool. There's the code. I love this big monitor. <laughs> I'm looking that direction because that's where your faces are on my monitor, <laughs> and then over here is where my SQL is, <laughs> and then in between is I got the chat. So this is a lot better than last week. Last week I had one little teeny laptop monitor, right? All right, did everybody get those numbers close? Yes. Okay, everybody yeah. got it? We're all good. Uh, close enough. Okay, cool. All right, so let's retry that uh, query again. This one, I'll, I'll share it with you in the chat. I'll rerun it too. Yeah, it doesn't change my numbers. If your numbers are off a little bit, it might be because maybe uh, Fred communicating with Python wasn't perfect, right? Yeah, mine are still off a little. So. How, how much? How much off? 
So for my average for zero is 5.6. Huh. And then for one, it's 5.26. Okay. Hmm. So I have given us, however, I just noticed on my left side, my tables, I have an extra minimum wage there. You don't have the minimum wage there? I have an extra one. Oh. Okay, so what, they're, they're na named the same thing? So one has a minimum wage with a period at the end, and I tried to drop it, and it says it doesn't exist when I try to drop it. Try refresh. Just yeah. try refresh. Did that work? No, it's still there. Why don't you share your screen with me for a second? All right. <laughs> Sarah, where is that at? China? Machu Picchu. China? Machu Picchu. That's a country? Peru. Oh, Peru. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Incas, you know. Okay. The lost city. Doesn't seem very lost if you have a picture of it. <laughs> Once was lost, was now found. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do a new query. There it is, all right. Okay, now let's do, because it has a period, you have to use brackets. Sometimes, depending on the SQL language, you can use quotation marks. Okay, let's is it try double this. Is it double quotes usually for column, or, yeah, never mind. I think they're the same, aren't they? Sometimes, well, I think double quotes are for column names, single quotes are for variables, depending on the SQL language. Yeah. I think they're the same file. So what we can do here is we can drop table, and then that should drop that extra table. And then they go over here to refresh. Yeah, what happened is on the import, I think you probably ended this uh, line of code with a period. And when you're importing, you don't have to end the line with any punctuation, right? I did that before with a semicolon. I'm like, where did that semicolon come from? <laughs> okay, so we got that one deleted. So let's go back to my view. All right. So how, how's everybody on the numbers? Other than minor, uh, minor, minor matching now. Okay. RG, are yours matching now? What happens if you don't include that second line of uh, join code? Uh, it, it'll probably just join things by year. And since these wages may vary by year and state, it kind of messes it up, right? <laughs> Okay, so what this means is the unemployment rate is higher in states with a high minimum wage than it is in a state with the federal minimum wage, right? It's higher. Let's try this. This is going to be cool. We're going to just kind of play around with this. Add a line to this. Round. Same thing. So you can just copy it if you wanted. You got to get rid of that period, comma. Now, so just copy this line of code and then replace UR with LFPR, the labor force participation rate. And then run that. So it gives you a higher labor force participation rate in a slightly higher labor, face, labor force participation rate in states with a low minimum wage, slightly higher, right? 
And then we'll we'll just add another one. We'll copy that and do, we're gonna do real GSP. We'll do real GSP. Now, there's a problem with this though. California's gonna have a huge real GSP, right? Idaho's gonna have a small one. So big states tend to be states that have high, high minimum wage laws, right? Let's, let's do this, let's divide by pop. Let's do real GDP per capita, right? This is per capita GDP. And we'll just put a per there. That means per capita, right? So per capita GDP is still higher than um, real cap, real, real, uh, real gross domestic product per capita in states with uh, a low minimum wage, right? So it's still the, the higher minimum wage is in richer states, right? So let's try, let's go ahead and just try them all. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this code and give it to you in the, in the chat. Where'd my chat go? Is that my chat? No. I lost the chat. I must have closed out the chat. So go ahead and just copy over this. There it is. Just paste that into this whole thing here. So just paste it into the whole thing here. We'll just do them all. We'll just kind of look at it. Oh. We have the same issues I had before. I think it's because there's like the, it's something with the spaces and the round function. Huh. Maybe it doesn't like the ABG. Hmm. You know, I did this earlier. Oh, there it is right there. It's the comma right there. Uh, there it is. I forgot a comma, dang it. There's a comma supposed to be right there. Okay, that should work. Let me uh, copy this and I'll, I'll, re, I'll repost it to the chat. Yeah, it's got a comment now. Let me let me fix my code. What I kept on doing is I just kept on adding more categories. I thought it was kind of interesting story. What? You know, I ran this earlier today. <laughs> you left off the uh, HSMWG on the after group by. You missed your group by at the very end. Oh, group by. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll just copy the one that I put into my. There you go. There we go. Now we can see the whole thing. All right. I have two of those now. Okay. So the unemployment rate is higher in states with a higher minimum wage, right? The labor force participation rate is higher in states with lower minimum wage. Uh, real GDP per capita is higher in states with, so maybe wealthy states can afford a minimum wage, right? States that have, uh, and this is uh, average, average tax collected by a state. So it kind of gives you an idea of the size of government. So big, big, uh, or wealthy states, per capita wealthy states, collect more taxes, right? Collect more taxes. Look at the average right here. Look at this right here. The average annual or average uh, um, 
Oh, so this is the this is a double average. So it's the um, it's basically the average wage of leisure and hospitality workers in these states with a high minimum wage, a minimum wage higher than the federal. You have to pay leisure and hospi hospitality workers twelve dollars and twenty cents on average, but in the states with a federal minimum wage only, uh, you only have to pay 7.7. <laughs> so what that means is it's like New York City. If New York City imposes a $15 minimum wage, probably not going to do much damage to restaurants and whatnot because that's probably the going wage in New York City or San Francisco or Seattle. But if you pull, impose a $15 minimum wage in Wyoming, you're probably going to crush the economy, right? Because the cost of living is much lower in Wyoming right? Or rural Utah, or rural Colorado, right? So maybe the wages are just lower in general. Maybe these states are just lower wage states. And maybe the, the minimum wage law is just a political football. If you're a high wage state, it doesn't matter if you impose a, a minimum wage, right? If you're a low wage state, you don't want to, maybe you don't impose a minimum wage, right? And then look at the uh, the states that don't have a uh, minimum wage or have the federal minimum wage. Their average, the, the number of people getting, the percentage of people getting a bachelor's degree or higher is only 17%, right? But it's almost 25% in states with a minimum wage greater than the federal. And that doesn't mean uh, uh, the state's minimum wage causes people to go get a job, right? Or maybe it does. I mean, a, a college degree. Maybe you're unemployed because of a high state minimum wage. And for that reason, you go to college. I don't know, right? High school, 55% versus 70%. That's interesting. So the people in these states probably just don't value education much, right? Home ownership is higher in, that's interesting. Maybe these are rural communities, right? Where there's less renting going on. <laughs> employment, employment in um, <laughs> retail, right? The, the number of employees in retail per, per capita, right? This is population times a thousand, right? So the number is so small that I multiply by a thousand to bring it back up. But uh, there's more retail jobs in these particular states, right, that have a low minimum wage. Look at the CO2 emissions. Maybe these are farming rural communities that drive a lot, right? These are maybe more like urban centers with, um, with uh, or, transit. Or they have to drive twice as much for having two jobs too. Yeah, they might have minimum wage. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, they might be just driving a lot more, and they might be farming communities where they emit a lot of CO2, right? Okay, we're going to redo this, but we're going to do it by, we're going to add some code to that. I think all I have to do is add this. Let me fix my code here. We're going to add... We're going to add this. I'm going to put a comma here. <laughs> You're going to get a kick out of this. This is really cool. We're going to add a year right there. Okay. So we're going to group by this and year. And then we're going to order by year and that, right? So let's run that. Okay, check this out. Now, the best way to view it is by shrinking this window down until you only see zero and one, right? I probably need a, should I put year here? I'm gonna put year up here on top. <laughs> That's good, right? So you can see year 2001, states with a low minimum wage and states with a high minimum wage, right? Look at the unemployment rates. They're higher, right? 
Labor force participation rates are higher in low wage states. So the labor market, there's less unemployment in a, whoop, sorry. You wanna have two rows showing. So the unemployment rate is better in the non minimum wage state, the low minimum wage state. Labor force participation rate is actually lower in 2001, right? That was a recession year too. Recessions tend to hurt people with low job skills more than people with high job skills. And these states have a low bachelor's degree rate, right? Oh, look at the real GDP per capita, much, much higher in a high minimum wage state. Look at the, the average tax per citizen, much, much higher, right? <laughs> I don't know why those are zero. Oh, there's no data in those particular years. Remember, there's no data in those particular years. H home ownership rate is higher in the low minimum wage states. Retail, there's more retail jobs per capita in the low wage. Look at the CO2, right? Now check this out. We go to the year 2002, what happened to CO2 levels? They kind of went up, right? They went up in both types of states, didn't they? They went up a little bit more, did they go up? They went up a little bit more in 2003. Maybe I'll move the year. I'll make it last. Because the CO2 thing's really interesting, right? The th CO2 thing's really interesting. I'll put year at the last. <laughs> so it's, CO2 goes up in both, of the, both types of states, right? It continues to go up in both types of states. But then what happens? Is it coming down now? It still went up in 2004, right? 2005, did it go up? Now, it kind of peaked out, didn't it? It went up in the low minimum wage states, but it went down in the high minimum wage states. But now is it going down? Well, it's, it's starting to go down now, right? Look at it now in 2009 on. CO2 in both types of states is plummeting, isn't it? Shrinking. Looks like it peaked in 2007 and then dropped. Yeah. yeah. But it continues to go down, doesn't it? That's the, uh, what, what, what is it? Not the who, but um, the Paris... Uh, the Paris Treaty or the, you know, for um, the... No, I, don't, I don't know if it's that. What I think it is, is firms are listening to people. And mm -hmm. I think firms, markets are adjusting to the demand of consumers. And consumers want what? They want cleaner burning vehicles. So I think it's really markets. I don't, I don't think the Paris uh, Climate Accord had any teeth in it. And when Trump backed out of it, I don't think it was actually... I think it, there was a delayed effect to it. It was, there was an implementation lag to it. There's a huge lag for the Chinese and the Indians, right? There's a huge lag, like a 20 year lag where they're, they're finally constrained by it with like 10, 15 years from now. I think what it really is, is what people want. People want cleaner burning cars. And so firms are responding to that. And as young people who are more environmentally conscious become go from being 18, to 25, they're looking at buying a fuel efficient car, right? My generation is still driving around in four by four pickup trucks, Idaho limousines, right? But I think young people who are um, out of college now are looking to buy what? They're looking to live in urban centers. They might be renting. They might be living near their work. They might be walking to and from work and they might be driving a car that's really fuel efficient. I think that, I think, Firms are just responding to demand, right? That's my belief anyway. The United States actually saw a huge drop in CO2 from um, the early 2000s. If you look at total emissions dropping, I think we had the largest drop of any major country 
in the last 20 years, huge drops. And we're not in the, uh, we're, we weren't in the Paris Accords for about three or four years and it continued to drop. And then the pandemic really caused CO2 to drop, right? So I thought those were kind of interesting things that you can do in SQL, right? Pretty cool, right? How you can see uh, things change through time. And that's kind of what you want to do in data analytics. You want to look for these categories, right? Being a labor economist myself, I kind of thought, well, what would the data look like? What would these averages look like if we split states out by whether they have a high minimum wage rate or a low minimum wage rate? And I was actually kind of shocked. I, I think this right here says states that are pretty well-to-do, they can afford a high minimum wage. You look at the, the wages of what's being paid to leisure and hospitality people, right? And that's probably, you know, if you get a job in leisure and hospitality, you probably start at the minimum wage, right? I would think. So let's just look at that real quick. I'll back all that out and rerun it so that year is right here. So in 2007, people working in leisure and hospitality in a low minimum wage state were just earning less per hour. It's probably, these states are probably rural, right? They're, they have a different labor market, right? You know, Wyoming wages at a restaurant in Wyoming are gonna be a lot lower than they are at a New York City Manhattan restaurant, right? And that, that difference, maintains itself throughout the data set. It also suggests that, you know, maybe imposing a $15 minimum wage everywhere in the United States might not be a good thing because it might put a lot of people in rural communities out of business, right? Rural communities have fewer large corporations that can innovate around those minimum wage rates. Restaurants like the uh, Iceberg probably couldn't innovate around the higher minimum wage, whereas McDonald's can, right? So this is just telling me that these are two different labor markets, right? Oh, look at that. Oh, wait a minute. That's, oh, two different years. Look at the year 2016, man. Those wages are really popping, aren't they? It's like, maybe we won't even need a $15 minimum wage. I mean, you can get a job starting out washing uh, RVs or trucks at this truck car wash I take my motor home to, the starting wage there is 15 bucks an hour. So I think the starting wage at Crown Burger is like $10, $11 an hour, right? Which is above the, the uh, federal minimum wage, right? So I thought that was kind of an interesting way to look at the data. And that's kind of what you want to do as a data analytics person, business analytics person, right? Look for these categories. Try to split the data up into interesting categories that make sense. And there are algorithms we're going to talk about in the next couple of weeks where we can use an algorithm to do that for us. Okay. That's pretty much it for, that I have for SQL. Um, well, SQL Lite. We might use SQL Lite in the future to put data together. But what I use SQL Lite, what I use SQL for is to combine data sets together instead of doing it by hand in Excel. I use uh, SQL and access to do that now. I don't use SQL for this kind of stuff. I, I, uh, I uh, use R or Python to do this kind of stuff. Uh, Tyler, is there anything else you can do in SQL that's kind of interesting? Or is this kind of the, the limit of what SQL can do? I mean, you can I, do I'm, pivot charts. Yeah, um, a lot of it's just data blending, bringing yeah. data sources together. Yeah. yeah. 